like mutants or mutations. Many of us get images of amazing superpowers, such as the characters from X-Men or even the TV show Heroes. But here at Lake Catharaba, the reality is far less appealing. At the Sunland Freshwater Fish Hatchery, owner Gwen Gilson has seen first-hand experience of just how horrifying mutations can be. Gwen has had 25 years of successfully breeding Australian native fish in the Noosa region and has witnessed the problems occurring due to chemical contamination. The mutations in this area have appeared to have originated from several compounds found in pesticides used by farmers in surrounding macadamia farms. Carbenism and endosulfan have been found in Lake Catharaba and Boring Point. Bass fish and other aquatic animals use these waterways as their sporting run. We asked Gwen Gilson about her experience, recommendations and knowledge concerning the mutagen agent and the effects on these fish. There are seven full veterinary reports being done on all the syndromes here which clearly state that chemicals are the problem. Well, all Stop the fish that we need to breed from are chemically castrated. There's no way they can breed. Um, you can see none of these survived. Mm -hmm. and. You know, a fish with two heads or two tails, anything deformed, just can't survive in the wild. Gwen Gilson further explained that there were several more deformities found in her fish at the embryonic stage. This included fish with no eyes, short stumpy tails, two heads and even three tails. The only way she can possibly explain the horrible mutations that have been found in her hatchery is from her neighbouring properties, where pesticides and fungicides have drifted across. Some fish were able to hatch but only surviving a total of 48 hours. Carbenism and endosulfan are the two chemicals that are the most problematic and are continuously showing up in Gwen Gilson's property. Carbenism is a fungicide that has been banned in 62 countries but still widely used in Australia. It is also highlighted by Friends of the Earth as one of the filthy four chemicals that is used in the world today. Not only this, but carbenism is a hormone disruptor which can also cause mutations in fetuses. Considering the chemical is highly toxic in aquatic life, the effects that have been seen on Gwen Gilson's fish is quite unbelievable. Endosulfan, on the other hand, is another toxic chemical that has been reported to cause cellular changes and is quite susceptible to several fish species. In 2005, this chemical was banned in Australia from most vegetables and limits to the amount that could be used were created and updated. In a recent study pertaining to the short-term effect of endosulfan in zebrafish embryos, it was seen that certain abnormalities occurred, such as reduced sensitivity to touch and in some cases paralysis. At the highest level of concentration, 33 to 80% of the embryos exhibited curved notochords, restlessness, erratic swimming, coughing, flashing, convulsions and loss of balance. Although chemicals do have a recommended level where they are said to not cause any effects, if chemicals are mixed together, horrible things can occur, as Gwen Gilson will explain now. Each individual chemical causes a particular effect, but if you mix the whole lot together, then at a much, much lower rate, um, it's, it's a lot more dangerous. Carbenism was proved to cause chromosomal apparitions in experimental animals. It was also proven by international agencies, the World Health Organization, and the Food and Agricultural Organization to cause malformations of an embryo or fetus. These effects were proven to be amplified in aquatic life. But how did these mutations and deformations of the embryo occur? Carbenism works by inhibiting polymerization of tubulin, the protein that is essential for the segregation of chromosomes during cell division. If chromosomes do not properly segregate, non-disjunction occurs. This result is with an extra chromosome or missing chromosome, which is known as aneuploidy. Usually in development, fish receive two sets of chromosomes, one from the mother and one from the father. Therefore, the cells of a fish are normally diploid. However, if carbonism affects meiosis of parents and gametes, the result is an extra or missing chromosome for the developing fish, and severe embryotic defects occur. In other studies, carbonism was seen to cause gene mutations in base pairs. However, very little is known about this concept concerning fish, particularly Australian native fish, as minimal studies have been performed. Currently the one and only solution is seeing these chemicals banned in Australia. 
There is no other answer to getting these chemicals out of our waterways. It is up to natural chemical degradation. But of course, this won't happen if, it, if these chemicals are continuously being used. But if nothing is done to protect the future of our farming, the future of our ecosystem, these types of problems will be seen more frequently and even more severe. Gwen Quilson has seen the effects it has caused on her fish, but it just gets worse. Various horses, cattle and pets have died. Chickens are not developing properly and even her own health is declining.